Hi everyone and welcome to Glimmering Trees. I'm going to be showing you how to paint this today. And um, during the lesson, I'm going to just refer to the um, basic colors that I'm using. But if you want the full set instructions with all the color names um, and all the step-by-step -step instructions, I will have that along with the line drawing for this particular design. And it's on my website at debbiecole.com. And what I've done is I have just sectioned off the bottom third of this, or a good letter over. And um, the bottom third of this, I've just penciled off. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna begin with a three quarter inch brush and I'm putting it in water and blotting it. And then what I'm going to do is pick up the first dark. Now, what I like to do is just barely dampen, and I mean barely dampen. This is going to move the paint a lot better. Um, Canva seems to absorb a lot more moisture than let's say painting on a hardboard surface. So what we want to do is just make sure there's some moisture in there. Not a lot. We don't want a puddle because it will take too long to dry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just go in and flip some shades in. And so what I'm doing is corner loading my brush. And then I'm going, so I came in and just added the shades there. And then what I'll do is I'm laying my brush down a little differently and I'm chisel pulling it right now in that area. And I'm going to pull it all along the secondary line. And we'll begin chisel pulling in here. I want this area a little bit lighter, so we'll keep most of the darkness over here. And I have already dampened my sponge, and it just feels a little bit wet. This should not be dripping by any means. <clears throat> and I'm going to go into my lighter color that I have on my palette over here, and I'm using palette paper. I really like using palette paper. Some people use um, foam plates, um, but to me, uh, putting my paints on palette paper helps with all the techniques that I use. So once I've loaded this, see how it's really in there, it's not blocked on. I'm going to very lightly come up and we're going to put some background foliage in. It's just the indication that there's some movement back over here. There's no right or wrong way of doing this, but notice how it's random. It's not all coming across the same way. And yes, this is not going to show up a lot. It will be in the background. I'm just going over it a little bit to soften it with my sponge. Okay, so I'm going to I'm putting my sponge off to the side. It's in a container with water so that it does not dry off. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go in. I have a small flat brush. And I'm going to take my lighter color and place in our background trees. And these are the ones that they begin here and they're very small. So I start with my brush down and then I twist it and let the um, tree just kind of fade away. Here. And I just kind of have one up like that and almost looking like it's floating, but I want to run and keep these small. Now I'm going to come in with 
um, the other trunk color, and I want to eventually get them down here, but as soon as this dries, I want to pull some more shades. So I'm going to just pull them from up here for now, just so I know where they're going to be. And these are going to be a little bit better, bigger. And I want to have some branches kind of coming out. I don't know if my branches are going to show 100% after we're done. I need to have a little bit of water in here. See how this dragged right there? That's because I did not have enough water. Eventually, I'm going to bring these a little bit down, a little bit further. Then we're going to have another one right here. And did you notice how I brought some of these lines? right over the other tree. I have three right together here. And then one more here. Now, if you're painting at home, you can easily blow this dry um, and because I'm working in an area with lots of lights. Mine's drying very quickly. So I have just a little bit of dampness. So I'm gonna come in and just try to add some more shades really quick. And I'm gonna use a side load with this darker brown color. And I side load it across the top like I did the first time. And then yes, we will chisel pull some more in here. And then we want to bring these trunks down right about here. So I'm going to put a lot of extra darkness there. And a little bit more water in my brush. Side load it again. I'm going to pull right across the other line. Even though this is just a playful tree landscape. I still want to add a lot of depth. Okay, so we're going to just do a lot of chisel pulling. Remember, this area here is going to be fairly light. Okay, now what we're going to do is go back into our flat brush. And we'll bring these down. Because had I not, had I brought these down before I did that side loading and chisel pulling, I'd have to just wipe these out. So I'm trying to add variation to the size of the trunks. And then these are going to come all the way down here. So did you see, I just made that one a little bit better. So we're just going to go up. like that. So we're already creating a lot of depth by making the trees at different distances. Okay. So I'm going to get my damp on the sponge, which I put in water so I have to clean. Um, Really squeeze the water out. This is a really old sponge, and so if you make sure that you don't let your paint dry in it, it's going to last a long time for you. But when we work with it, when I squeeze it, I want to make sure there's no drops coming up. So I'm going to go into the um, first shade color that I put down. And I'm going to very lightly put in the foliage for these big trees. I 
Then I'm going to go into the darker color that I just used on the trunks. And I'm using a, a, a sponge that I did rinse out. And we're going to bring this down. You can't even see my branches now, but that's okay. So I'm going to take it all the way to the top. We'll say this is the biggest tree. Now I do want to have some branches and some of these that will show. So I'll cut back and pull just a few. Okay, so I'm probably need to do the same here. So I'll just pull. A few a little bit longer. This one's going to be a little bit smaller. <clears throat> I think I need a little bit more paint put out there. And then this one's going to get a little bigger. And it's going to be hard to determine where one tree foliage starts and the other one starts. No biggie. We're going to come in and do some highlights really quick. Okay. So while I still have this color out, I want to go back and I want to set a little, little bit underneath here. Is that my sponge again? Now I'm going to put out our highlight colors, which are metallics, and that's why I call this glittering trees. I love using metallics sometimes when you don't expect it, and especially in the trees. And you know, I see so much, especially gold mixed with black, but a lot of silver and things. Um, and so that's what we're going to be doing. And beautiful metallics, allowing this chocolate corn. What I want to do is make sure I put enough out so I can definitely. Mm -hmm. The highlights in. What I want to do is first, yeah, let's go ahead and, and do the sponging because I think my sponging is fairly dry. My sponge is dirty. I didn't clean it up, but we're going to start with the darker metallic color. I've got it loaded in here and I'm going to work it in. Always work the paint in on your sponge. Otherwise, it's just going to come in and really blob down. But what I'll do is I want to control it a little bit, so I'm kind of holding it together. And I want to just put this back of the highlights. So can you see how that's already looking like there's depth within that tree? Do the same back here. Pretend they have more highlights on the right side. Tree. Go ahead and give these a little sparkle also. Now I also want to go into my darkest dark and um, a little bit of this color onto the foliage. 
also shade the trees a little bit. Again, I don't care that it's dirty. That's fine. It just blends it all together. But that's the darkness on the side. The left side of the foreground trees needs to have some darkness. I'm not going to do that to the background trees. And so now what I also want to do is come in with my flat brush and let's just, on the side of these trees, just add a little shading. I'm just chisel pulling some sh shading. And this one's still fairly wet, but we're going to try to make it blend in. Well, I can see I just put my hand there. So let's just put, chisel pull a little bit of this darkness underneath the trees. I also want to use my bigger brush. Actually, let's use a big round. I'm going to pull in my first, in the my round brush, I'm going to put the metallic, the first metallic color. And I'm going to just chisel pull this round, trying not to go over my trees. Otherwise, what's going to happen is uh, that black's going to lift. This will give some sparkle to the foreground too. A lot makes it a little bit more moody. I'm really trying to protect this light right here to separate the, the two. Now we're going to go in sponge. We're going to go into our next color. I did try to find a little bit uh, of a clean section because this is still very dark. So what we're going to do, very lightly, put in some uh, See how there's a lot of depth there now because I'm using a lot less paint to put onto the tree to indicate that there's highlights there. And that's pretty, I like that a lot. Now these are, this is mostly on the right side. No, I mean, excuse me. Notice that the dark was on the left side. This is on the right side. I'm gonna put a little bit of this color in the background. And let's add some more highlights here. You may not know where the tree starts and the other one stops. But that happens in nature too. So now let's take some of this gold color and let's just put a little bit on the trees. I'm just stroking it on. Gives it a really pretty shimmer. tree still a little bit wet, but that's okay if it blends in with it. I'm not touching the trunks in the background. We don't want to add too much interest back there. I got a little heavy, but that's okay. So now let's add a little bit of gold in the background.
Okay, and then the last color we need to go into will really make it look very sparkly. And then because this is so cool compared to everything else, that would be a temperature, it's cool in temperature. Um, this is really going to pop up. I'm done with my sponge. Then what I want to do is I want to just go ahead and silo this lighter color. Because as I'm siloing, the other paint is a little bit wet still. And then this will just help the two blend together, almost making like a champagne type color. I will bring a little bit of this color down here. And I'll touch that up after I'm done with this and just use the physical color in there. Okay. I'm thinking I want to put just a little bit of this onto the trees too. Not just these two that are up, up front. Get that a little bit of the Wrong, so I'm trying to add a little bit more. Of this. Um, now, if you want to, you can play with this and, like, maybe I want to just gently put a few highlights here and there with, with the tip of my brush. I have a little bit more control. I'm really liking what happened with the sponging. What I like about it is you can't control, over control this one. So I'm thinking that looks really nice. And now I'm going to do something really different. I'm taking my old brush and dampening it. And I'm going to put out some tacky glue onto my palette. You don't need a lot. And I'm going to just open this up a little bit. Because it's so old, it's easy to open up. And so I'm getting just the tips um, with the glue. What I'm going to do with glue, I'm going to double it around on the trays. We don't want too much. Just a little back on these background trees. And let me just pull a little bit here. I want to add a little bit of sparkle. And this is some champagne color glass glitter. We're going to just pour it on here. Okay, and then now let that set for a little bit. When it's done, I'm going to put a piece of paper underneath it, and then um, I can reclaim the the glitter that has not stuck to it, and it will look unlike this. And each time I paint it, I'm sure it would be different. But I want to thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Please click on the subscribe button and join me. I'm going to have a lot more of these type of um, painting videos along with a few repurposing videos. Um, 
this I'm going to be putting, when I have a new home, I'm going to be putting this in my um, bathroom in my new home. And what I want to do there is I want to have some shelves where I can paint a variety of um, square, 12 inch square canvases like this and swipe them out every now and then. And so that will be fun. So you'll be seeing a lot of these 12 inch canvases coming from me. And I want to thank you again. I hope truly until I see you again, that painting will always bring me joy. Until then, have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon.